You are listening to the TriCast Gaming Podcast. Greetings and welcome everyone to episode number seven of the TriCast Gaming Podcast. I am your host, Philip Keeney, and I am joined today by just the ever quantumly present Adam Garcia. Hello. How are you doing tonight, Adam? I honestly am exhausted. How about yourself? Uh, I I feel the same way. I had a a new unique experience today at work. you know, obviously, uh, the coronavirus stuff is going on, and there's a lot of different uh, experiences that we're all having dealing with this. Um, and today, I had to virtually attend a recruiting fair. So that Whoa. was unique. Uh, I sat at my desk, uh, business on the top, party on the bottom. It's like the 2020 <laughs> mullet. <clears throat> <laughs> the 2020 the 2020 mullet and I sat at my desk and I Skype called a bunch of prospective candidates. Did you do it in your underwear? No, but I had uh I you know I was dressed up nice on the top and I had just some uh some gym shorts on the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would totally do the same thing too. Yeah, absolutely. Um so that that was a unique experience, but yeah, sitting there talking to people for I don't know roughly 4 to 5 hours this afternoon um it does get exhausting because you kind of have the same conversation sort of over and over a, a lot of the time. But uh, I don't know. It was a little bit better. I mean, I've, I've gone and recruited at these uh, schools before and you're kind of exhausted at the end of the day with how much, um, you know, how much standing that you have to do during the day. So maybe that was better. I don't know. But it was definitely a different, unique experience. I can imagine. See, I'm I'm exhausted for for other reasons. Me and Shelly have been on a Cobra Kai like binge. Like apparently, it's been released on Netflix, and we are completely addicted to it. Like we we never saw it on YouTube, but so now that it's on Netflix, we're like totally watching it. Yeah, interesting. I, I guess we'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the show. I was gonna ask you about that uh, when we got to that point, whether or not you'd seen it was on Netflix, but apparently you have. So that's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's making me stay up way past my bedtime and I, I'm, I partially regret it. I'll just say that. Yeah. I've been real bad this week too. Um, staying up pretty late. I understand, um, what you mean by that. My, my kick though has been high score. We talked about that, uh, oh, I think yeah. on the show last week, but I've been watching that, that show high score, which is all about the history of, or the early history of video games. Yeah. I'm on episode I'm about to start episode three on that one. Yeah, I just that's the episode I'm on too. Actually, I have started it. Uh, it's there's a little bit about Dungeons and Dragons in episode three, but I haven't finished it. I'm, I'm about halfway through it. Nice. I'm I'm real bad about that. Starting a show and then sort of stopping halfway through. My wife is like the total opposite. You know, she'll just keep watching, even when she's like exhausted and falling falling asleep. But I, I I'll I'll stop if I'm if I'm dozing. If my eyes are closing, I'll be like I don't want to miss this. I'll stop it. <laughs> dang this yeah. this is gonna sound bad but I, i'm kind of like what what you described with your wife like i'll i'll continue to watch it until i fall asleep but honestly the only thing i've actually fell asleep on this is gonna sound terrible for those of you that are listening but the only thing i fell asleep on was dr strange dr strange uh that was actually a pretty good that was a good one i like that one yeah i did too but i fell asleep at the at the tail end of it Interesting. I thought he was a really unique Marvel character, and uh, I I really liked how sort of at the end he had quite a pivotal role to play in all of that. But I don't want to mm-hmm. I don't want to have to give a spoiler warning, so I won't say more than that. <laughs> I think at this point it's safe. Oh, uh, you never know. I mean, what is it like a year or two years old now? No, nah, I think it's more like maybe three. I don't remember what we stated our statute of limitations was for the show. I don't either. Yeah. Oh, well, <clears throat> uh, did you see, uh, did you, see, uh, um, that the man, the Mandalorian season two got a release date? I don't know if you're into that show or not, but I still, I want to watch it. I just, 
I'm afraid to start it and then not dedicate the time for it because I believe it deserves that like your full attention. So I'm afraid to start it and just like forget it. You know what I mean? Mm, it's really good. I I was a big fan of it. I know some people kind of say it's a little bit campy. It is a little bit campy, and you know it's maybe not the best Star Wars, but I really like it. I think it's going back more towards. Um, you know, like Rogue One, I think was a really good movie. And I think it goes back more towards telling an interesting, compelling story outside of the main big characters, as opposed to trying to ham fist some, I don't know, new, strong character of a certain gender leading the role, leading everything and trying to filter in luke skywalker and everybody i don't know that none of that really worked for me so this being like a, a very just interesting story outside of the main big people you know i mean the galaxy is huge you know there's yeah. a there's a there's a scene in um i'm trying to remember i think it's i want to say it's in the clone wars show where yoda is talking about how he's visited like a thousand worlds or something like that over his time, a thousand thousand worlds or something like that. And I'm like, mm. there's, there's that many different planets and that many different peoples. And you're still just going to tell me a star, a story about another Skywalker. So <laughs> I like the, the whole Mandalorian show and, and they put the release date out for October 30th, which is like less than two months away for season two. So I was pretty surprised about that. I was really excited when I read that. That's cool. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I want to. I'll probably wait till it's out before I start season one. That way, I can just keep going. Yeah, that's that's fair. I mean, I've watched season two twice already, so you could always watch it and then watch it again and then go yeah, straight. Yeah, into I could. Two. I mean, if I can watch New Girl with my wife three times, then yeah, I could probably do this. <laughs> yeah, New Girl's not a bad show, though. No, it's not. It's not a bad show. Uh, I guess in uh, in other news, though, this week, since we were t- kind of talking about Marvel and other things, you know, Chadwick Boseman passing away, it was pretty sad. Yeah, that was completely unexpected. Like, I had no idea he was going through what he was going through. Yeah, me neither. And it really struck because, I mean, 43 years old, he's, he's you know, maybe 10 years older than me. Um, so it's just sort of – and the fact that he was dealing with it for four years, so that means, like – you know, he was 38, 39 when he started dealing with it. Just kind of scary a little bit. Just brings into perspective how um, indiscriminate life can be. You know, it doesn't matter how famous you are, how much money you have, or how good you are of a person or not good you are of a person. It just doesn't really care. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah, like at death, we, we all have our our specific time clock. Some of us clock out before others, but you know, we all, we all reach that finish line at some point in our lives. Yeah. It makes you want to focus on the most important things. And at least, you know, I think we all, I think we're all pretty good about focusing on important things, but also focusing on things that you want to do. And I mean, that's kind of why I wanted to do this podcast, not directly, but sort of directly, you know, I'd been thinking about, this whole idea of life for a lot for a while now. And, uh, when, when I finally was like, you know what, I'm just, I need to do a podcast. I keep saying, I want to do it. I, I, I have, I think interesting opinions to say, I think I, I have a lot of, uh, energy and passion to put into something like this. And it shouldn't really matter if we've got five people listening or, or 5,000 people listening. If it's something that I want to do and put on, on a recording, you know, now's the time to do it. Don't, don't wait. And so mm-hmm. that was one of my big drivers for wanting to get, get the show going. So uh, seeing Chadwick's passing, you know, just really kind of keeps hitting that home for me. Yeah. And I had a, a similar way of thinking with what, with what you just described. As a matter of fact, do you remember uh, Doomsday, the uh, December 21st, 2012? Remember that? Sure. Yeah. Yep. That, uh, you know, like I, I was that type of person. I'm like, what if? And then I woke up that day. I went to work. I went to Lowe's and I was just kind of like a little it was a little eerie for me. And I woke up and I was just looking around. And I was like, man, we're actually here. I thought we were supposed to all be gone. And then I was talking to my coworker, Emilio. I don't know if you remember him or not. Um, 
he I was talking to him about Shelly, as a matter of fact, and I was like, you know, I really want to want to like ask her out. And then he was like, well, if you're not going to do it, when are you going to do it? And then it just dawned on me. And I'm like, today's doomsday. Like I, I survived what people thought was going to be the end of the world. Like why, why don't, why am I waiting? I just, so that's the day that I asked her out. That's pretty, that's pretty cool story. I, that's like, I remember, I remember when the new, the new uh, millennium turned and, you know, whatever, December 31st, midnight, 1999 and, and uh-huh. turning the clocks there and everyone thought that chaos was going to rain. And I, yeah, you see those happen. You see that those happen periodically in, in life. But that's pretty cool, though, that you chose that moment to say, nah, screw it. I'm going to do this. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. So, and now the rest is history, right? You're married and everything. So yep. thank, thank God for the Mayan calendar. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what the Mayan calendar was predicting was me asking my future wife out. <laughs> yeah, I was literally all about Adam Garcia. Well, I guess um, I guess we can we have something to thank the Mayans for. <laughs> yes sir all right um you know, before we get on into what the show is i had a couple more personal hygiene questions uh that i was going to ask you if listeners recall a few weeks ago i i just threw this in here out of nowhere i came up with a couple more so are Dear you re- <laughs> are you ready adam i'll as ready as i'll ever be all right have you ever blown your nose into your hands, like make your hands into like a tissue and just blow your nose into those in the shower? Partially, yes. And the, the reason I say partially is because there's been a couple of times where I sneezed and I'm like so stuffy that it just falls in my hands because I don't know why I'm, I'm covering my mouth when I'm in the shower when I sneeze. I guess it's just force a habit and that'll happen. But other times I'll just... You know, you see these guys, they'll hold on to one side of their nose and just blow. It's like that's sometimes I'll do that, too. But if that's only if I'm like super stuffy. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be in the shower and it's nice and steamy and it'll kind of get stuff moving. And I'll just be like, I got to blow my nose. But, you know, I don't know. I don't I guess I want to control where it goes or something. I don't know. But I just like I'll do that. I'll take my hands and put them right <laughs> up to my nose like it's a tissue and and blow away. Well, the real question is, what do you do with it afterwards? I'll wash my hands off. I'm in the shower. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make sure it all goes down the drain and everything, wash my hands off, soap them up again if I have to. Gotcha. Yeah, so, uh, all right. Well, uh, the next one that I had <clears throat> was, do you have any product loyalties for, like, body wash, shampoo, toothpaste? So, like, if you go to the store and you're like, I got to get body wash, do you just go straight to, like, you know, Irish Spring? or something like that or do you just do you do you care do you just get whatever you get well i used to not care but i got older and then my body started being stupid so i'm like okay i have to get this i have to use that because if i use this it's gonna do this and so i just now i have to be loyal to specific brands and it's 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 extremely annoying so you don't like having to be loyal to brands well, I guess it's more of a I have to get this or else something else that I don't want to happen will happen. Like you got to like, use dandruff shampoo. Yeah, for instance, yeah. Like yeah. I have like I used to get Axe body wash all the time. And that was I had to get Phoenix. That was it. I had to use that. And then all of a sudden my skin started getting real dry. Mm. And my wife was like, you know, maybe it's because of the the perfume type stuff or the cologne that's in the the shampoo. Like maybe it's drying your skin out. Mm-hmm. And so we had to switch to Avino or we didn't have to switch. We tried it and like it worked like my skin was back to normal. It wasn't all scaly like an alligator and I wasn't flaking everywhere. And I was like, well, this is cool. But Avino, really? <laughs> I think I actually use a vino too. Well, my wife, right. my wife shops for uh, for me. She, I used to be the same way. Like I, I always, I think I used Old Spice, and I always would get Old Spice. I thought it smelled good, and mm-hmm. uh, and she was like, "I'm just gonna buy what I what I think we should buy." And I was like, "Well, okay, whatever." And so I think she, yeah, I think she buys a vino 
as well. I don't know. It works for me. The only thing that she she does she does do regularly is buy. Um, it's the like tea tree mint hair shampoo that that uh, some people really like, and I find that it like literally burns my scalp when I put it on. So I'm like, I really? can't use this. Yeah, I'm like, no, no, thank you. If she brings it home, I'm like, I'll go back to the store and get a different shampoo. I cannot use that. No, sir. Wow, that's kind of scary. Yeah, I I don't know what it is. It's it does not feel good. I don't like it. And she always thinks it's weird. It doesn't happen to her. But for me, I don't know what it is. Something within it just doesn't react well with my skin or something. I don't know. What if it like burns, like if you used it and it burns your scalps and it like turns you like a, like a bleach blonde. That'd be really weird looking. I don't know if I'd be able to handle that. <laughs> it looked like yeah, a no. 1998 Justin Timberlake or something. Oh God, no. Yeah. The ramen oh. noodle hairstyle. Yeah, yeah, I, that would not be me. No, no, thank you. I'd have to go. I'd have to go to the hair salon and get them to dye my hair back to my normal color or something. And then you'll get the one hair salon person who's going to be like, "Oh, you look just like Justin Timberlake. Why do you want to mess it up?" <laughs> because I look like Justin Timberlake. That's exactly why. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Everybody, each and every week, we get together to channel our virtues through the Triforce to provide you all the latest news and general thoughts from the mythical world of video games. We are new and largely doing this of our own entertainment because we love video games. If you like what you hear, please consider leaving us a like and review in your podcasting app of choice. And if you really enjoy it, please consider sharing on social media and the like to your friends. Now, I've heard uh, from some of my uh, friends that listen to the show that it is incredibly difficult to seemingly figure out how to like or review a podcast on Google services. So if any of you out there that does use Google uh, know how to, how to do this, please write in so I can let everyone else know uh, how you like and, and review on the Google podcast. And regardless, even if you can't figure out how to do that, another thing that really helps us is just set that to auto download so that every Friday, once we release it automatically downloads that episode for you. That really helps us too. If you can't figure out how to like and review, um, as always, you can find us on Twitter at TriCast gaming P one and on Facebook at TriCast gaming podcast, uh, or finally our website, TriCast gaming podcast.com. We would love to hear from you. So please DM us on Twitter or Facebook with your questions, and we will be happy to read them out on the show. Questions, corrections, uh, comments that you want to, if you've got some personal hygiene questions or some other crazy thing you'd like to add in at the front of the show, please. I'd be happy to hear it. I'm always open to new ideas. Now, We've kind of gone 15 minutes without mentioning our missing soldier, uh, Mike Martinez. He is uh, dealing with some stuff this week. He's not going to be with us, uh, but he is in our hearts as always, and hopefully he will be back next week. So don't worry. Mike is going nowhere. All right. Um, Also, before we kind of get into the main meat of things, I've got one correction the other PC key purchasing storefront that I was trying to think of is GOG. So GOG.com was the other site that I was trying to remember. And I said like GOW or something ridiculous like that. I don't know what I said, but <laughs> I could not think of it on the show. So GOG.com, that was what I was trying to think of. All right, let's get into what we are playing. Adam, it looks like you've been playing Raft and Digimon World Dawn. So regale me. Well, Raft... It, I, I've been playing this forever. Do, do you know anything about Raft, by the way? I know that it's some kind of survival game or something. Not not a whole lot. I've never played it. Yeah, it's it's extremely simple but complicated at the same time. Like, you start off in this one-by-one one platform, and you, you have to gather all the resources as you're drifting in the ocean. And you, get, you gather plastic, you gather wood, you gather leaves, and you have, a, like, you have to, like, get a hook... And then, like, you throw it out to grab all the stuff that you can, and then you you build your your raft as big as you can, or as you want to. And every now and then, you run into an island, and that's very important because you can harvest like fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. But you're also in the beginning of the the game when it was first created, you would be stalked by this shark, and 
full disclosure, whenever I first started playing, I died like eight times before I figured out what I was supposed to do. And I got in the water thinking, oh, I'm just going to go grab this piece of wood plank real quick. And lo and behold, I get killed by the shark because I'm like, oh, no, what do I do? And I don't have anything to, to defend myself with. And now, fast forward to today, I log in. Uh, you can still get attacked by sharks, but I have the ability to anchor myself down in the middle of the ocean, attack the shark, harvest its meat, and cook it on the barbecue grill that I just so happen to know how to make. And it's just, it's fun to play. It, it's a good pastime game. It's a good Minecraft style game uh, without it being Minecraft. Like, I mean, the graphics are good, but that's that's pretty much what Raft is. Okay, yeah, so I, I know that you've been talking about it a lot uh, whenever we've been mentioning Grounded and playing Grounded, so I guess, yeah, I guess it is a little bit similar in mm -hmm. what you're describing. That is correct. Yeah, I'm just looking at screenshots here of the game, trying to, because you were talking about graphically, it, lo it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, it kind of has almost like a little bit of a Sea of Thieves kind of, kind of look to it. Mm -hmm. Not not too far off of that. Yeah, it looks it looks all right. Yeah, I mean it's I, extremely cheesy because like you you run into the shark and like it doesn't look like like a real shark. <laughs> but it looks it's like still... something straight out of Jaws. He's like on the pier trying to build something, and the shark's up here just chomping down on the pier. Yeah, it's I mean it's fun. I like it. Awesome. <laughs> well, what about uh, what about Digimon World Dawn? That, have, we talk, have we talked about this game already on the show before? We I I I brought it up, but we didn't talk about the game because I, I mentioned how I miss being able to play that game under, uninterrupted. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, that game, I've I haven't finished the game yet because it's one of those games where I play at night when I'm trying to wind down. And it's just a good pastime. And so each mission usually takes about a half hour to finish. And uh, I like playing the game because it reminds me of the card game. Because I remember playing that when I was in junior high. And like it's, you know, you, you do your attacks. You can attack so many different people in so many different like areas and stuff like that. At the same time, you can have up to five different enemies at the same time. But um, when I played it. I completely forgot who, what I named my character. Um, I was going through the dialogue and they were talking to me and they're like, Taven, what do you think of this? And I'm like, oh yeah, I did name it Taven. And like, that's for those that don't know, that's the name of my son is Taven. Um, so I mean, it was kind of like a, like a full circle moment. Like I always played most of my created characters as Taven because I always thought that name was cool. And then next thing I know I'm naming my son Taven. That's pretty awesome. What a fun little thing to kind of realize and, and stumble back upon as you go back to this game. Mm -hmm. And you, what do you play this game on? Uh, the 3DS. The 3DS. Okay, yeah, I see that now. It's a DS game. Kind of looks a little bit like Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're along the same lines. Uh, same type battle thing. You know, you have your turn. You, like so many, if you have so many, did, in this case, Digimon, uh, like you have it on your team and then you fight so many on the other team it's just basically the same thing cool well that's uh i don't know when it came out do you know when it came out it's been around a little while yeah it's it's been around a long while but you know the reason why i'm barely playing this is because i got a 3ds a couple of years ago whenever my wife was like i wish i had someone to play animal crossing with and so i was like well let, let's go get me a 3ds and i'll buy, buy animal crossing so that was my first 3ds game and then all the digimon games were the next in line Cool. Yeah, it looks like March 2007 from Bandai Namco Entertainment. Dang, 13 years and I still haven't finished the game. <laughs> Man, what does that say? I'm, I'm way behind the times, apparently. That's okay. Well, you bring a colorful different uh, view of different games uh, to the show, so that's <laughs> fine by me. All right, uh, I guess I haven't been playing a whole lot uh, because all I've been playing is Destroy All Humans, the remake. And that is because I have an obsession with Platinum Trophies now. Uh, I've, ha <laughs> I've had this 
obsession. I started with Horizon Zero Dawn was the first game that really I was like, I want to get the platinum trophy in this game, and I and I worked towards it, and I really liked it, and it sort of drove out this desire in me to kind of do it more. I never was big into the achievement uh, scene on Xbox, mostly because there's not like a thing at the end of the stick. Like you get a thousand points and then that's it. Like you just got a thousand points. And then whenever they add DLC, you don't have a hundred percent of all the points anymore in the game. So I always was like, there's nothing that I'm like working towards here other than some arbitrary high score. But with platinum trophies in play on PlayStation, if you earn all the trophies in the base game, you get a platinum trophy and that platinum trophy stays with you, even if they add DLC or anything like that. So Anyway, I'm on this kick, and I'm like, I can do Destroy All Humans. But boy, do I have some opinions about Destroy All Humans now. You know, Uh-oh. before, I was pretty I was pretty um, even on this game. You know, I thought it was fun, and I, I liked what I was doing. But it all started when I got to the final boss of the game. And, and this game, it did what I think is a big, big no-no in game design. And that Uh-oh. is... The final boss is exceptionally more difficult than just about the entire rest of the game. Like, exceptionally more difficult. Uh, And it's actually a two-part boss fight. I didn't realize this either. So the first part, I played for over two hours trying to beat uh, this first part of the boss fight. Now, before before anybody... messages get good and all that i mean you can if you want but let me let me just let me just state that i am a massive dark souls fan i've played through that game in its entirety dlc and everything three times i loved bloodborne i finished all of bloodborne optional bosses non-optional bosses i've seen all the different endings uh same with uh same with sekiro okay i can play hard games i can beat hard games i enjoy hard games but this was some next level nonsense bullshit. Okay. (laughs) It's, it, it's because of the different mechanics. Now it makes you fight the boss in your saucer. The saucer doesn't have great, uh, elevation control. It does have elevation control, but it's not great and it won't hold your position and it'll bounce with you on terrain. So if you like start to get to a, a building, it'll throw you way up in the air. And then as you come off the building, it'll drop you way to the ground. If you're not, if you're not constantly, fiddling with your elevation control okay so you got this going on the boss that you have is making you constantly spin in circles and move up and down to avoid his attacks okay so you're constantly spinning around in circles which puts you into contact with the other buildings which makes your ship go up and down so you're constantly trying to control the elevation well oh also this boss will will shoot rockets at you and the only way to avoid the rockets is to hit the circle button at the right time to to uh sort of flash your shields at it and reject the rocket. Okay. So you're trying constantly trying to pull your hand back off, off the stick to reject rockets. Okay. But then you also have got to shoot your guns. And the only way to recover shields is to pick up a car, you know, with your little abductor ray and repeatedly tap triangle a whole bunch until it, it absorbs the material from the car and restores your shield. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't just drop cars by the boss. You got to draw. You got to fly away from the boss. And oh, what happens when you fly away from the boss? He just spams the shit out of his rockets at you. So you're trying to fly away to get a car to pick up to get shield, but he's spamming rockets at you. And every time they come, even if you deflect it with your shield, it hits the car below you and destroys it. So it's like basically impossible to recover your shields. Is is Good what happens? Lord. And so. I'm basically just trying to get through this without dying. And I finally, I gave up. I just, I flat out, I was like, I've got to look something up. I've got to look up a way to beat this. And I find, I find that if you, if you fully upgrade your shield, your repulsor shield, that you can actually deflect the rockets back to them. So to cheese this boss, you will fully upgrade your repulsor shield. You fly off to some corner and you just spam the shit out of your repulsor shield and fire all the rockets back at him. So are you serious? I, yes. So first try doing this, obviously I beat it, but it's literally just sitting in a corner spamming back the repulsor rockets for like 10 minutes while you 
Because that's the other thing. It's like a freaking bullet sponge of a boss. I mean, stupid bullet sponge. And then you get into the second part of the boss fight. And I died several times on that. Although that ultimately was not quite as difficult as the as the ship. I did not need any cheese method on that. I found that, you know, you just need to focus on bringing her shield down. Once you bring her shield down, she stuns and then you spam the harder ammo at her. And then you just got to be careful uh, when you, when you break her different phases, she's got three phases. When you break each phase, you got to be careful because some crazy shit happens in between each phase <clears throat> and you just kind of got to survive it. And then you can go back to your plan. So I only died a few times with her, but man, that first part, I thought I was just going to have to give up the game. So anyway, I get through it. I get through it, and I've got every trophy at this point except for the three-star challenges in all the worlds. And So I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go do this. It's the only trophy. Surely it's not that bad. Well, let me tell you, this is like some Crash Bandicoot shit. I don't know if you've ever played Crash Bandicoot (laughs) and tried to do the speed runs, but this is like – so there's a trophy in Crash Bandicoot for the speed runs where you have to get at least a gold trophy, but but the times – are so damn like precise that half the levels that I got the 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 right time in on Crash Bandicoot was actually like the platinum le- whatever time it was like the fastest time. So th- it's the same thing with Destroy All Humans, where to get the three stars in the challenge, I mean, you have to be fucking perfect. And I mean, dude, I beat my head against that wall all week. I stayed up till after one o'clock working on this thing. I finally did it last night got the last three-star challenge got the platinum trophy immediately close application delete game from console (laughs) fuck destroy all humans wow that's some dedication man but i have that platinum now so that is what i've been playing so hopefully i bought uh last weekend i did buy vader immortal and i actually bought doom vfr so this weekend i'm planning to pull out the psvr headset and do a little bit of vr gaming i'll let you guys know what that's like nice all right so now that i've got that off my chest uh one more time (laughs) fuck destroy all humans uh (laughs) let us get into our newsreel All right, so this first group of stories is a little bit of a PlayStation block. So sit down, buckle up. uh, Let's hear what's going on in the world of PlayStation. So number one, Sony could be on the lookout for new studio acquisitions after a recent financial report published by the platform holder mentions that it is also willing to invest in or acquire companies with, quote, abundant creativity and cutting edge technologies to help build up the worldwide studios, end quote. Its most recent acquisition, of course, was Insomniac Games in November of last year, for which they paid $229 million for that studio. Uh, Insomniac, of course, developed 2018's Spider-Man and is currently working on the Miles Morales Spider-Man game that's supposed to launch with PS5, as well as the Ratchet & Clank A Rift Apart game, which is supposed to be in the launch window. I'm assuming that game will be a March release of next year. That's where I think that one's going to hit. Um, Adam, what do you think here uh, about Sony maybe acquiring some more studios? I think that would be cool, but it kind of has a fishy Disney by every company there is out there type feel to it at the same time. So I'm kind of 50-50 on this. Yeah, I mean, what I've noticed is that Xbox and PlayStation have been kind of you know, bringing talent in. It's seemingly like there's less and less really true independent studios out there other than the small developers. So I don't even mm-hmm. really know who's out there. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people, whenever this conversation comes up that I hear from, they point to blue point games. And I think that one kind of makes sense. Blue point games, of course, is more of a remake studio. They did the shadow of Colossus remake and they're the ones working on the demon souls remake. So They've already been working pretty exclusively with PlayStation and PlayStation have a lot of old titles going back into the PS1, PS2 era. And as we're going to get into it in a minute, you can't, you're still not going to be able to play those games on PS5. So maybe there's an opportunity to pick up that studio and do some more remakes of some old games and bring some more old franchises forward. And Bluepoint Games could be perfectly placed to do that. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. 
but look out for that. All right, number two, Sony has also said that it will continue to explore the expansion of its first-party titles to the PC as it looks to, quote, promote further growth in our profitability. It recently released its first true first-party studio-developed game on PC, which was Horizon Zero Dawn. That released on August 7th. That's had a bit of a rocky release hasn't uh, been optimized that well for PC. They've been having to patch that game a lot. Horizon Zero Dawn, though, is an exceptional game uh, developed by uh, Guerrilla Games. Uh, So, And a sequel is in development for that game for PS5. So that could be interesting. Uh, That that certainly was not received well by Sony ponies uh, who really just want to (laughs) fanboy out for the console because you know what? Now you can't say the games are solely exclusive to PlayStation anymore if they're on PC. But Mm -hmm. I think that they shouldn't worry too much about this because really it looks like Sony, even if they do put more, more games on PC are going to give them, you know, maybe a couple years on the PlayStation before moving them over to PC. So if you want them right at launch, when they're really relevant, you will still need a PlayStation console and really who cares? They're awesome games. Let everybody play them. You know, Mm -hmm. it it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It should be on all these, it should be on, on PC and PlayStation. That still means that you got to either have a PC or a PlayStation to get in and play PlayStation games. That's still exclusive from Xbox console. I think this is a good move. Let's see what they bring next. Uh, in further PlayStation 5 news, I have a little bit of a roundup here. Some of these are are uh, rumors and, and some of it is from Sony itself, but let's go through it. So according to the Ubisoft fact page, PS5 will not play PS3, PS2, or PS1 games. <clears throat> this information has since been removed and Sony has yet to comment. This is just pouring further fuel on that fire that the PS5 will be backwards compatible to the PS4 and nothing more, which is totally opposite to the Xbox Series X, which will be backwards compatible all the way through to the original Xbox that launched in 2001. Also, another little rumor. According to The Verge, the PS5 will not have an optical audio port, which means some older headsets will not work natively with the console. Astro will sell an HDMI to optical audio splitter, though, that will allow your headset to interface with the PS5 with no further firmware update required. So this I thought was interesting because Xbox admitted almost immediately when they put out the Series X specs that there would be no audio port. And that got a little bit of a rumble from some people that that typically like to use uh, optical audio. But I think this is a bit of an archaic technology. I think I think the PlayStation 2 had an optical audio port on it. Um, it so uh, a little bit of archaic technology here. Uh, I don't think this is too big of a deal. I don't think many people are using optical audio. But if you are, be aware that neither the Xbox Series X or now we can confirm the PS5 will have an optical audio port on the console. All right, finally, this one comes from Sony itself. They have reiterated its commitment to VR on the PS5, stating that it, quote, plans to provide content for a variety of games, genres, and formats, and make advances in unique and interactive experiences such as VR to create a better user experience. Uh, It believes that this will maintain momentum of the PlayStation 4 and promote a smooth transition to PS5. So it looks like they're really still focusing on making sure that the current PlayStation VR headset works for PlayStation 5 and supporting it in that capacity. So hopefully some more games and stuff. There doesn't look like there's really any mention here to a PSVR 2. But if you were like me and got in and invested $500 on a VR headset way back when it first launched... It should still be relevant when the new console launches at the end of this year. I'm hopeful with better resolution. I think that's one of my biggest problems with it. I kind of get nauseous because the resolution inside the headset is not great. Um, so yeah. I'm really hopeful that uh, the PS5 with its increased heart, um, horsepower and such can really help the, the even the current VR headset shine a little bit better. Okay, all right, I'll move on to number four here. Uh, PlayStation Now has added the following titles. Uh, Since we highlight Xbox Game Pass, I don't want to ignore PlayStation Now, which is a similar service on their console. They've added Resident Evil 7, Final Fantasy 15, WWE 2K19, and Observation. These can be streamed or downloaded on your PS4 since they are PS4 titles. Anything older than the PS4 and PlayStation Now cannot be downloaded on your 
console, which is different from Games Pass. It should be noted that Resident Evil 7 is also coming to Xbox Game Pass, and Final Fantasy 15 is already on Xbox Game Pass. So <clears throat> if you have either of those two services, you can play those games as part of your subscription. Nice. All right, Uh, so now that we've given you your PlayStation block, let's move on to Xbox. I've got a few Xbox uh, stories here to tell. So number five, according to a report published today by Video Games Chronicle, Microsoft is expected to launch the Xbox Series X ahead of the PlayStation 5 in November, with the outlet saying that its development and retail sources have suggested that Xbox will go first. So they're saying that Xbox will release the week of November 6th, and then the PlayStation will come a week later on the week of November 13. This is not too different from uh, the the current generation of consoles. I believe they also released a week apart. I cannot remember which one went first. Maybe you can look that up for me, Adam, as I'm talking. But uh, certainly this is not all that big of a deal, a week's difference between the two. If you had like a six-month or an eight-month window between the two, that might actually result in increased sales for one over the other. Uh, But one week difference is not that big of a deal. What's more frustrating, as we'll carry on here into item number six, the as yet unannounced Xbox Series S has leaked again, this time through Microsoft's own Xbox Game Pass marketing material packaged inside recently purchased Xbox Xbox One controllers purchased directly from the Microsoft website. The material states, quote, includes Xbox Live Gold and unlimited access to over 100 quality games on Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, and Windows 10. Truly remarkable that Microsoft packaging material is already coming out for a console that the company still has not announced. That is unbelievable. I I really don't know that that's happened before. Uh, And if we carry on, meanwhile... Uh, Xbox UK marketing lead Samuel Bateman has taken to Twitter with the following statement, quote, I understand everyone is excited to know and people want to plan purchases, etc. We'll let you all know when we are ready, which for me is essentially an utterly worthless statement. You told me <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Listeners, let, let me be clear about something. It is September 3rd. We're recording on September 3rd. There is still no mention of a release date for either of these consoles or a price for them. These things are supposed to release in November. So if, let's say, the Xbox One does release on November 6th, that means we are just over two months away from release. Never, from PlayStation 1 up, has it been more than four months before the console launch that we got, uh, or sorry, never has it been closer than four months before the console launch that we got pricing and release date. So the fact that we're sitting at two months away, I mean, genuinely, I don't care at this point how much they say that console is going to release this year. I'm not convinced. I do not believe it until it comes out. This is kind of like any anybody that, that understands this pain. I'm an Arsenal fan, and I just do not believe that a transfer is actually happening until our club announces it. It's just been, it's bitten me too many times. So I feel the same way here. I'm at this point, I do not believe that the consoles are coming out this year until they actually give me a release date and a price at this point. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I think they're, they're playing with fire at this point. Like they, they just need to either say, okay, here, this is going to be the day that it releases. This is how much it's going to cost like soon. Because if they wait any longer, I'm going to assume, like it says on that website, Video Games Chronicle, that they're, they're thinking that COVID-19 has, it may cause a dis- disruption in their distribution and possibly lead to supply issues. And right. so that, that's probably why they're, they're waiting on, on giving this information out because they're, they're waiting to see if, if that's going to happen, because if it happens, they're going to be like, well, we, we said it's going to come out November 13th, but it's really we're going to have to push it back because of COVID. And so that's probably why they're doing that. But at the same time, they need to communicate that. Yeah, I think and, it, I think at this point they just need to pull the trigger internally and say we need to push it to March or April of next year. Yeah, which I mean, honestly, would really suck 
to me, but at this point, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, everybody. We'll see. <laughs> we'll keep waiting. Uh, as I said last week, I will not be holding my breath while I wait, though, because I would pass out. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll move on. Adam, did you happen to find uh, which one went first of this generation? No, I, I, I was trying to read speed read through all this stuff. I, I couldn't find. Okay, well, I'll just is. add that to corrections next week. I'm pretty sure that the PlayStation went before the Xbox this past generation by one week, but I'll add it to corrections and I'll let you guys know, let you guys and gals know for sure uh, which 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 was first uh, in corrections next week. So moving on, number seven, Crystal Dynamics has announced that Marvel's Avengers will have a paid battle pass for every superhero after launch. This is a little bit confusing because they had originally said that all the characters would be free. So why do we now have a paid battle pass? Well, let's get into some details. Each character itself and the story, gameplay mechanics, and locations associated with them will, in fact, be free of charge. But each character will also have an associated hero challenge card that, when leveled up, will unlock new customization items to equip, including outfits, takedowns, emotes, and more. Each hero challenge card will cost 1,000 in-game credits, which can be purchased for $10. So these Ugh. these battle passes will be $10 per character. Now, having said that, credits can also be earned as part of the progression through each hero challenge card. With Crystal Dynamics saying a fully leveled card will net you exactly 1,000 credits. Also, the original six characters with the game at launch will have their own a hero challenge card that will be unlocked for free with your base purchase of the game. And they will also include these thousand credits. So theoretically you can, as long as you just pick one, your favorite, like Iron Man or someone, you can earn the thousand credits and you can buy the battle pass for the new character. And if once you get the new character, you earn the thousand credits within that battle pass, you can buy it for free with uh, the, whenever the next character comes out. So theoretically you could never act. You could, if you play the game enough, never actually be in a situation where you need to purchase more credits in order to buy the next battle pass. And of course, you are certainly allowed to play with the character uh, through all of the content in the game without getting the battle pass. You just won't be able to customize your character. So this is very similar to Rocket League's Rocket Pass. I bought it the first season, and I have never had to buy a season pass after that because they give credits as part of the Rocket Pass, and I always max out the Rocket Pass. So we'll see how difficult it is to level up fully that hero challenge card. If it's obnoxiously difficult, then this could be really, really a, a shitty thing to do. But if not, maybe it's not so bad. All right, moving on to number eight, Crystal Dynamics again has also announced that the first superhero arriving after launch is Kate Bishop. Her story begins right after the culmination of the game's the base games campaign and ties into the narrative that also brings Hawkeye into the fray. Uh, they have already announced Hawkeye, but Hawkeye will not be the first uh, extra character to be released post launch. The character edition was not dated, but indications are that it will be added shortly after launch. Kate Bishop will be voiced by Ashley Birch and brings with her new story missions, locations, and gameplay mechanics to ensure a fresh experience can be enjoyed at by all the latest war table live stream that announced it also seemed to indicate that it has plans to unveil black panther as a new playable character but the re reveal appears to have been delayed out of respect for chadwick boseman who we mentioned at the start of the show passed away this week mm -hmm. all right number nine ubisoft has confirmed its second showcase titled ubisoft ford will stream next Thursday, September 10th at 2 p.m. Central Time. The announcement trailer states it will contain new games and big news. Uh, number 10, Ubisoft has also announced that new IP Gods and Monsters has been renamed and is now called Immortals Phoenix Rising. This game was originally revealed at E3 2019 and was supposed to release in February of 2020, February of this year. It was delayed last fall along with Watch Dogs Legion, and we haven't heard much about it since. And apparently it's gone through an entire facelift, including a new name. Ubisoft, though, stated that its re-reveal will take place during that September 10th Ubisoft Forward. So I guess we'll see what is in store. I don't think I can recall this happening before. Adam, do you do you remember this? You know, a game going silent for so long that when it comes back, it's a totally different name even. 
No, I haven't. Uh, if it has, it was very insignificant in my eyes because I I've never seen that happen before. Yeah, pretty wild stuff. So I don't this. I don't know, guys. <clears throat> um, at this point, I'm not going to be too excited for this one. Uh, I'm going to wait and see. It's interesting though, because this is the second game that's that this has really kind of happened with um, under Ubisoft's banner, except. The, the first one that I can think of, Skull and Bones, just hasn't re- it just hasn't resurfaced. I, I think Skull and Bones is probably done. I don't think they're ever going to release that game. So really interesting what's going on over at Ubisoft, along with all their other problems with um, internal sexual harassment claims and stuff. Um, really rocky times for Ubisoft, but I don't know. We'll see what they have to say on September 10th. That's next week. All right, moving on to item number 11, Sea of Thieves. Next update is titled Vault of the Ancients and is coming on Wednesday, September 9th. The update adds a new permanent voyage for gold hoarders, dogs as pets. That's pretty cool. And some yeah, quality cool. of life features. All right, finally, our last news item, id Software has announced that its first major story expansion for Doom Eternal, which is titled The Ancient Gods Part 1. They denounced it already, but the new news about it is that it will be available as a standalone purchase meaning you will not have to own Doom Eternal to play it. It will arrive on October 20th and will cost $19.99. That's convenient. Yes, so you can get in there and try it, although it is an expansion of the story from Doom Eternal. So I don't know that if you're really interested in both that I would recommend playing Ancient Gods before Doom Eternal. But if you want to, it's a cheaper way to get into the game, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Okay, all right, that is the end of our newsreel, and we should move on into the topics of the show. Adam, my voice is getting a little tired after the newsreel, so I'm going to go with topic number two, which is your topic, uh, and that is the new Cobra Kai game. So why don't you tell us all about this one? Cool. Well, if for those that are listening, if if you haven't seen the Cobra Kai series, you should definitely check it out. Obviously, we talked about at the beginning of the show. It's available on Netflix, the first two seasons. They recently announced that there will more than likely be a season three, which I'm halfway through season two, and I can't wait to finish it. That way I can be excited for season three. But in researching what season three is about, it turns out that the Cobra Kai is actually going to be a game also. It's called Cobra Kai The Karate Kick Saga. And it's going to be released on the PS4, the Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Now, if you've ever played a fighting game, it's going to be extremely similar. But the only difference is that you get to play throughout the Karate Kid universe. So you get there's there's scenes. If you haven't watched the trailer, go check it out. There's scenes where you can see like where callbacks to the original movies are happening. You see the the costumes, the skeleton costumes. You see Daniel getting his his ass whooped, and then you also see the adult versions of these characters, and you see like you know the the adult Johnny and adult uh, Daniel getting into each other's faces, and then you also see the new characters Miguel and Robbie, I think Robbie or Ronnie, one of the others, uh, fighting, going through all these things, and it kind of reminds me of a Ninja Turtle style fight where it's just you know it's, it's on the side. And you can just only go left or right. You can't do a whole lot of things. But they also mixed it in with, um, what is that game? Street Fighter. And so it looks interesting. Graphics are definitely co- very cartoonish. It almost has a feel of, uh, what is that that storytelling game? Tell me why. It kind of has that same feel, except that it's not like Sin City type. It's just more of a cartoon, like a live action comic book. Yeah, definitely get that comic book art style vibe to it. Yeah. I mean, it looks like, I think the key to this that everyone needs to remember is it more than likely it's not going to be game of the year. This is just going straight for nostalgia and it's just basically, they're making it for the fans of the, of the series. Yeah, it looks cool. Um, it's going to be sort of, uh, like you said, side-scrolling beat-em-up like a uh, Double Dragon. Or yes. um, <clears throat> we've been talking about Battletoads recently because it just came out. So Battletoads is a side-scrolling beat-em-up too for large parts of the game. I don't want to spoil anything. but um, So this is going to be very similar to that style. 
Uh, it says that you're going to have couch co-op play, which is really cool, and that you'll be able to swap between any eight characters as you play. So that's cool. Have they announced what characters they're going to have? What eight characters? Um, I think I'm not entirely sure. I know for sure it's going to be Johnny Lawrence, Daniel LaRusso, Miguel, whatever his last name is, and then Johnny Lawrence's son, Robbie. Those are the four that I can tell. Oh, and then the Daniel's daughter. And those like those are the five that I can think of right off. And I I think maybe uh Sensei Crease. But that that's as far as I, I think it can go. As far as like what, what I'm speculating. That's pretty cool. Did they get like did they get the the actual voice actors to come in and work on this game? I would imagine that they did because I mean they have all the original characters in in Karate Kid to play in Cobra Kai, so I would imagine they'd have the same characters for the for the game. Ralph Macchio. Yeah. Have you have you seen Cobra Kai? I haven't watched Cobra Kai, but of course I was a big Karate Kid fan. I mean who like my age growing up was not a big Karate Kid fan. So I really do need to go watch Cobra Kai, but I mean I'm I'm all about the original movies. Yeah. Like this it, it definitely follows like for the original three, not not the next Karate Kid, because let's just all forget that even existed. But um, there was another. I just the the trilogy. That's it. Part one, part two, part three. That's all that exists in my world. Yeah, there, apparently there's four, but let's just pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. The uh, it's definitely yeah, it, just it, three. It, I mean the whole the whole Cobra Kai series just follows 34 years after the events of the first movie. And even in the middle of season two where I'm at, they make a lot of callbacks to all three of the movies. So it's it's nice nostalgia because they always use the original footage. And it's it's really it's I like it. I like what they're doing with it. I like how they have done it. And I can't wait to finish it and also start season three whenever that comes out. Well, you got me at least interested to go check out the first show on Netflix for sure. I was just reading along here a little bit. Further, it says that you will need to complete both the Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do karate campaigns in order to unlock the game's ultimate ending. So that's neat. So there's two different sort of campaigns that you follow throughout the game, and you'll have to to do both in order to get whatever this, quote, ultimate ending will be. Yeah, and it's interesting, too, because that's that's kind of what they're doing even in Cobra Kai because you get the perspectives of both sides, and each side thinks that they're... (laughs) they're being bullied by the other it's it's insane how they're they're playing this out so i if they're following that same format on the game i would i'm i'm gonna enjoy it awesome well look forward to that i mean october 27th is not far away i was trying sorry i've i leaned back from the microphone there so i'm sorry if i drifted away there a little bit but october (laughs) 27th is not that far away i was trying to look up the game on the store do you know if they've got a price released on this yet i haven't seen one yet i would imagine it being what it is, I wouldn't think that it would go more than thirty dollars. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Thirty dollars would be a fair price. Certainly, it shouldn't be a sixty dollars game. Um, I was trying real quick uh, to see if I could look it up and see if they've got a placeholder on the store yet. It does not look like it's on the PlayStation Store yet, so um, that's unfortunate. I, I bet it's probably about thirty dollars. That's what I would think would be a reasonable price for this. So, it could be a cheap. Uh, relatively speaking, uh, one to pick up and probably not a terribly long game, you know, maybe a six to eight hour campaign at, at the at the most. Right. So definitely I am interested in checking this out. I do think that the art style is pretty cool. Um, and ah, just I just found it. It's going to be $40. $40. Okay. Well, I'm glad you found that. $40 is still not too bad. I mean, nah. you know, the cost of video game development is is not what it used to be. So forty dollars is still not too bad. If you guys are on the fence, it sounds like both at least two of your three hosts are gonna be in on this day one. So we'll let you know what this thing's all about when it comes out in just a little under two months. Yes. All right, I'll swap back over here to topic number one. This is in honor of our missing hero, the roguishly handsome Mike Martinez, uh, and this uh, item number one, or sorry, uh, topic number one of the show is all about the new NVIDIA GeForce graphics cards that got announced. So 
Uh, we're not, or at least I'm not, a big PC guy, but I know Mike is, and Adam, you play more on the PC, I think, than than I uh, I do. <clears throat> but they've put out these new graphics cards. There's three of them that they announced, the RTX uh, 3080, 3070, and the new high-end BFGPU. It's just pretty funny. Big, big fucking GPU. <laughs> <laughs> uh, called the RTX 3090. More on that beast here in just a minute, but <clears throat> these new uh, cards are exceptional looking in terms of, of what they can do. Uh, the 3080 is the middle of the road. So let's start with the 3070. The 3070 uh, looks like it's uh, going to have 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and will be capable of 20 shader teraflops. So I guess to sort of try to put this into perspective to the console world, um, Xbox Series X is supposed to be 12 teraflops when it launches this uh, this holiday. Uh, quote, uh, if it launches this holiday. <clears throat> and the <laughs> PS5 is supposed to be about, I think, like 10.8 or 11 teraflops. In relation to what's currently out, the Xbox One X, I think, is like five or six teraflops. And the PlayStation 4 Pro is around the four teraflops range. So 20 teraflops is a big jump, although what does teraflops really mean? It's supposed to be a measurement of graphical power, uh, which is kind of a difficult thing to really measure. So teraflops is is somewhat of a... Uh, mystical unicorn of a number, but you know, that's, that's okay. So 20 shader teraflops, 40 RT teraflops and 163 tensor teraflops. Uh, We're getting into realms of things that I don't know. I think the shader teraflops is the most relevant direct comparison back to the consoles. So according to NVIDIA, it is more powerful than the RTX 2080 Ti, the currently most powerful mainstream graphics card available. The RTX 3070 will launch in October and is starting at $499. <clears throat> All right, the 3080 is going to have 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM and will be capable of 30 shader teraflops. According to NVIDIA, it's twice as powerful as the current RTX 2080, and um, the 3080 will start at $699 and will be launched on September 17th. Finally, the big fucking GPU, the BF GPU, uh, the yep. RTX 3090. Uh, this thing is, this is, this is mammoth. This absolute monster of a card. Seriously, it's massive. If you haven't seen it, go look at this guy holding this freaking card. It's like the size of his chest muscles. It's huge. This thing. <laughs> This thing <clears throat> has a ridiculous 24 gigabytes, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and can push out 36 shader teraflops, 69 RT teraflops, and 285 tensor teraflops of GPU power. NVIDIA claims the card is capable of running at 60 frames per second in 8K. This thing, this one graphics card, will set you back 1000 Four hundred and ninety nine dollars, and it will be available on September twenty fourth. Wow, what do you think, Adam? Do you think they taste take post data checks? <laughs> I don't know. I can't imagine spending fifteen hundred dollars on a graphics card. I can because as as a video editor, that's something that I I need because not only do I play games, but I also edit a lot of videos and do a lot of animations. And seeing the specs on this, I'm just like, the things that I can do with this card and the games that I can play with this card and the new monitors that I can get with this card, the possibilities are endless. But I need to know if I can write a post-data check for the year 2083. That way I can get this this video card. I'm afraid that's probably not going to work. If I had to take a guess... If I had to take a guess, I'm going to go that that's not going to work. See, I mean, I, I could put something on it. Like right now, I can give them like $5 if they want to just go ahead and give it to me. I can just pay it off later. Uh, what's that? <laughs> layaway. Do do some layaway at Best Buy. Yeah, well, the layaway, but with me actually having it, and I can just keep paying them until it's paid off. Yeah, that's called a credit card. You can do that. 
nah, nah, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is crazy stuff. But <laughs> my favorite part about this whole thing, okay, this was released or this information came out. Uh, when was this dated? Uh, September 1st. So this was 